And we have some progress regarding the engine. So I'm here with the progress of since the last video. And I made actually the entire like graphics backend to handle stuff on screen. Uh, so as you can see here, I do have OpenGL working with uh, clear colors and I do have off screen handling. So this quad here, this external quad is a single quad with a texture inside and this texture inside is actually a handler of another quad with a generated texture. There's a lot of stuff going on here. I'm not gonna go into details, but uh, I basically created the color uh, header, then the graphics header with some set target to allow off screen handling and then the main window handling to clear stuff. And then I do have an image class which is very nice they do i can create a weave and hide make it pixelated or not and then i can use i can set pixels get pixels and all that good stuff i do have the mesh that is necessary even for a 2d engine because i need to start position in uv per vertex so i do have it a very simple one and i do have a shader class as well and with options to pass uniforms great um, and then all that got had to be implemented, of, of course, and I'm not going to show you the entire implementation, but it is quite a lot of stuff. I actually did the math here. It is 132 lines of code of header files and 446 lines of C++ in a total of 578 lines of code to make all that work. Okay. And you can see all that implemented here. The shader is quite a lot, but this is probably final. Like I've been writing this for so many time that I don't even think that I will mess around with this anymore. Oh, by the way, I had to do some code, like some OpenGL stuff. I had some help to GitHub, but I had to hijack some stuff in Windows code to get some OpenGL functions. So yeah, it, it was complicated to generate the OpenGL context, but it's all done. And as you guys saw, it is possible to do stuff. So I can create a mesh here and I made this U2 to create a plane. Then I can create an image. This one is eight by eight. And then I iterate over the width. Oh, this is wrong, by the way. It needs to be high. Anyways. Um, and then I set a pixel to a random color. That's why you saw that this random image here in the center, it is generated here. And then I submit this. So this is the vertex shader, very simple vertex shader. And this is a fragment shader, very simple fragment shader too, with nothing going on here. But then in a while loop, I basically set a target to a staging texture, which I create here. Then I clear the station texture, I use it, I use a shader, set the image to this ID, then I set the image that I created before, use the mesh, draw the mesh, and then I do the same thing, but to draw it to the window, okay? So this is what you see. And you can see that it is scaled out. The reason is I've mu I multiplied the position of each vertex to 0.5, just to make it easy to visualize here because if i don't do this of course i have a full screen so i cannot see the off screen going on but yeah that's that's pretty much it this is the progress what else what's next well i'm not uh, i'm still deciding because i wanted to do to allow a more advanced transform system with like a matrix or our rotation and stuff not sure about that yet, so I'm still deciding. Maybe I will implement, and if I implement, I will have to implement uh, more, matri more, more math stuff. I have to implement uh, matrix tree by tree, and then a transform class to store position, rotation, and scale. I may do that. I'm still thinking about it, but probably, <laughs> and that's it. Let's see the next chapter if I would decide to do that or not. So that's it for this video again, and I see you in the next one.